What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is Bagel Boss, which, no, is not a new show on TLC or True TV or a destination of high-quality content, but rather, Bagel Boss is the location and store that is at the center of one of the most viral things I've seen in the past month. I mean, it just blew up yesterday. I mean, the original video is getting tens of millions of views, but if you have not seen this video, and actually videos, the second one hasn't got as much traction. Prepare yourself for the cringe. So the caption to this video comes from Olivia Bradley 88 and she says, so in Bagel Boss this morning, the misogynistic douchebag seen in the video was degrading almost all the female staff as well as other patrons. <laughs> this guy. Also, yes that's right, you just heard a bleep because the last seven Philip DeFranco shows have at one point at least been demonetized. Sometimes after a lot of the views have come in, maybe they'll reverse it, but uh, yeah, we're, we're testing this out. I'm not enjoying it either. But as I said, prepare for the cringe, because this is how the video starts. You're great women, why is that okay? They're great, why is it okay for women to say, oh, you're five feet on dating sites, you should be dead? That's okay! Now, if you're wondering where the hell that statement came from, I mean, it, it's probably 30 plus years of just taking L after L, but everyone was equally confused. Who said that to you here? Nobody. Women in general have said it on dating sites. You think I'm making that shit up? Yeah. Everywhere I go, I get the same fucking smirk with the biting lip. Okay, so right there, unless it turns out that something else was happening, that looks like textbook projection. Right, here's the thing you should know, and I have learned over the past 30 plus years of my life, most other people don't give a damn about you. You're just there. Not everything's about you. But based on human beings being insecure about something, we often attribute intent or, or an action towards us. Well, it's probably not about you and or why should you care what another person thinks about you? Okay, but it goes on. Shut your mouth. You're not God or my father or my boss. Oh, the longer this goes on, the more it makes sense. Dude, you want to step outside? You want to step outside? Huh? I'm not standing, pal. Okay, so at this point, he goes full chihuahua. And you know, the thing is, sometimes that can work. A lot of people in this world are non-confrontational, right? If you get into their space, you raise your voice, they're gonna back down, right? Blue shirt over here was prepared to go to a bagel place, get a bagel, not fight a man that appears to possibly have mommy issues. But the problem, and this is something my mother used to say, if you're gonna step up in a bagel boss, you gotta prepare to take a bagel loss. She didn't say that, and that's very stupid. Here's the next clip, though. I'm not standing, pal. Enough, enough. You shut up. I just wanted bagels is the, the best way this clip could have ended. Also, this part of the video confuses me because I can't tell if the man that tackled him is like six foot seven or the other man is just so small. And that's not a bash, it's just this man appears to be so short. It has this weird uh, funhouse mirror effect where I can't tell who's what size. That's the video that blew up, but it turns out there's actually more. And it's a video that it appears that only like 10% of the people that saw the first video have also seen. Get your food in. What happened? What was Oh God, she hit him with a have a great day. And what was that laugh? <laughs> I feel like that laugh probably hurt him more than the tackle. Shouting all you women is a bad look. And so that is essentially the full situation and the reason for the past around 24 hours, the entire internet has kind of just been clowning on this guy. Right, people posting lollipop guild memes, really any and all thing short person. Also, I will say, I end up getting a little concerned about making fun of the guy because the, the way that he acted, and in no way am I saying that anything he did is excusable. But it does genuinely feel like a guy that has been shit on for most of his life snapping. But I still think that it's important to look at this and go like, this is not a good look. This is not okay. You can't hold on to the bad stuff that's happened to you and then just release it on other people. The only thing we actually get to control in this life is how we act, how we react to situations. And if you're this guy and you feel like you've been disrespected by other people in the past because you're shorter and maybe they're one of these like, I only date guys that are six foot plus, you get to decide if you want to hold on to that energy and you're like, all oh, these women, or you can choose to react by going, well, there's certain women that I'm not going to approach. I'm still confident in myself. I know I'm a good person. I still offer things to a relationship. I don't know. I think, I feel like that guy needs to talk to somebody. Also, he should probably stay away from the internet for a little bit because uh, in this video where he makes it apparent that, you know, his height is a sensitive subject, internet has and will continue to see that and continue to clown on him for it. Hell, even Bagel Boss, which has gotten so much free press from this story. Yeah, the owner of Bagel Boss tweeted, after today's incident, everyone is okay. Use caution on dating sites and anyone who comes into our locations and mention this video can get a free mini bagel. But now, with all of that said, I pass the question off to you, 
What are your thoughts on this story? It was a ride, wasn't it? And actually, last second update to this story because it turns out it's not over. Uh, it has been discovered that this guy has a YouTube channel and a lot of it is just him screaming at people. Oh man, let's let's look at some of the hits like Ghetto Hood Rat Cuts in Front of Me to Use Bathroom. Look at this woman here cursing in front of her kid just now. Put your hands on me! You smack my phone! Put your hands on me! Let's go. I want to imagine to throw this the f out of the store. You, you get thrown out of here. F you, you ghetto skank. You're a loser ghetto skank. And who could forget his classic, harassed by a 7-Eleven worker. The first thing out of your mouth is what's my height? Where are you from? What country are you from? Okay, brother. What country are you from? Okay, I am sorry. What country are you from? Pakistan. Pakistan? Really? You know how much money our country gives you? third world toilet countries, huh? Oh, Chris, it turns out that's your name. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the, the sympathy going Chris's way just um, feels like it's being revealed that Chris is coming up short of deserving the sympathy that he was kind of only barely getting in the first place. But yeah, but from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome, brought to you by phil.ting.com. For those unfamiliar with the awesomeness that is Ting, they do mobile phone service differently. Right? There are no contracts, overage fees, any other kind of carrier tricks. You just pay a fair price for the talk tech and data that you end up using each month. And with Ting, you use the phone you want with the service and speed that you need. And best of all, you can get all of that excellence while also saving money. The average Ting customer pays just $23 per month for their one device. And best of all, if you go to phil.ting.com, there you can check your phone's compatibility. Or if you want to grab a new phone, I highly recommend using their bill estimator. When you realize Ting is what you want to use, because you went to phil.ting.com, you'll also get $25 off your bill. So click the link, check it out, save and enjoy. And the first bit of awesome today is it is Thursday, which means you get an extra extra bonus news deep dive. And today we delved into a topic that I was I was unfamiliar with. It is gastro diplomacy, food and politics. It's actually one of the reasons why I, I really enjoyed Anthony Bourdain when he had his show. And he talked about food as a gateway into a culture, how people interact with one another. And this is kind of very much along those lines. Right? What people put into their faces can affect what comes out of their faces and what they do, even on, on a country level. Yeah, definitely check it out after today's show. It'll be one of the top links in the description. And then I just want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite YouTube on the platform, Christine, aka Simply Neological. Also, honorary shout out to Ben. Ben! Is that good? I think that was good. And in addition to her being a fantastic creator, a fantastic human being, she has also just launched a brand new nail polish called Hollow Taco, which is a name that probably makes no sense to you if you've never watched her videos before. Yeah, I just love seeing internet creators expanding their own businesses, launching new lines. This is my way of showing <laughs> Support. You thought I wasn't gonna address my nails, huh? I don't give a damn if I can't pull off this look. I'm showing some support, and it feels somewhat appropriate in, a, in an episode that that feels very much about don't give a damn what people think of you. Yeah. Then in foodie goodness, Bon Appetit giving us making donuts. We got the trailer for Syntonia. Then in awesome, we had Dr. Mike. You might remember we did a, a Banff story on him. We actually did a story time on saving that man's life. Then we had Kumail Nanjiani on Hot Ones. And then finally, our phil.chrono.gg partner game of the day today is amazing. We have Monster Hunter World, which has thousands of overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. And if you get it using our link before 9 a.m. tomorrow and or while supplies last, instead of the regular $60, it is just $27.99. So if you have been waiting, now is your chance. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, really anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then in a quickie non-story, let's talk about Jason Momoa, Aquaman, also that might sound like a dig, but it is not. The reason I'm calling this a non-story is perhaps you've seen one of these headlines. Jason Momoa's dad bod highlights the issue of male body shaming. Jason Momoa gets grief for dad bod. Jason Momoa is being trolled over his dad bod and losing his abs by crazy, crazy internet people. Although I, I will say that last headline Line is probably the closest to reality. And this quote unquote story stems from a photo of Jason Momoa from Us Weekly. And yes, you're looking at the right photo, it is this photo. And if you're like, who's calling that a dad bod? Literally almost nobody. Went through the comments, this is like a faux outrage story. There are maybe 45 people worldwide that would call this a dad bod. You know why? Because it's obviously not. And kind of funny enough, two thirds of those 45 people are probably people that look like me, where I have to suck in to look like I'm only 30 pounds overweight. Main point, this is dumb. Nobody really thinks this. And if you're one of the 45 people worldwide that does see this as a dad bod. Oh, I hate to think what you think about yourself and or what you do. 
to yourself. Moving on. And the last thing we're gonna talk about today is actually our douchebag of the day, which I know some of you are like, I thought that was the first story. Nope, and in a second, you're going to understand why. So today's award winner is former Jackson County Deputy Zach Wester. And yesterday, Zach was arrested for pulling over drivers for minor traffic infractions and then planting drugs on them and then arresting them for having those drugs. According to a statement from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, he was arrested on felony charges of racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, possession of a controlled substance, and false imprisonment. And actually, he was also charged with misdemeanor perjury, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. And in total, according to reports, Zach was charged with a whopping 52 counts. And as of right now, it's unclear exactly how much prison time he could get. And the reason I say that is that the Washington Post reported that state attorney William Eddins, who oversaw the case, told reporters that he could face up to 30 years. But at the same time, the Tallahassee Democrat says that the racketeering charge alone has a maximum penalty of 30 years and that the other felonies have max sentences of five years each. But they then also reported that Eddins said that under Florida's sentencing guidelines, Wester would actually only face 13 and a half years if found guilty on all the charges. But still noting that a judge could give him more, so it's just confusing. Now, even though Wester was only arrested yesterday, the charges against him came as part of a nearly year-long investigation. Wester was reportedly hired by the Jackson County Sheriff's Office back in 2016, and then in August of 2018, the Sheriff's Office reportedly asked the FDLE to launch an internal investigation into his conduct. This after a prosecutor found inconsistencies between Wester's reports and what was captured on his body camera. Specifically, that he turned his body camera off most of the time and only turned it back on after he had already found the drugs in the vehicles that he was searching. As well as the fact that in most cases, Wester would pull someone over for a minor traffic infraction and then ask them if he smelled marijuana. That would then give him probable cause to search their car. And then, even though Wester would write into his reports that he smelled or thought he saw marijuana, he would usually then turn his camera back on to show that he found meth. And according to the affidavit, even in cases where the people he pulled over actually were suspected of crimes or admitted to having marijuana in the car, Wester still planted meth. And actually, as a result of the investigation, Wester was suspended in August of 2018 and then fired a month later. But notably, the prosecutor said that they wouldn't be filing charges until the FDLE investigation was complete. And that investigation took a while because there was a ton of evidence to review. According to the FDLE statement, during the investigation, their agents analyzed over 1,300 minutes of recorded video and logged over 1,400 working hours on the case. And in that just incredible amount of footage, the investigators found one of the few instances where he actually kept his body camera on during the search. In that specific incident, Wester had pulled over a woman named Teresa Odom, claiming that her brake lights weren't working properly. And in the body cam footage, we can see Wester is holding something that looks like a small plastic bag in his hand. He then puts his hand out of view under the driver's seat. It then returns without the baggie. And Wester later booked Odom on possessing meth. Also, according to the Tallahassee Democrat, deputies who searched Wester's patrol car during the investigation found, quote, 42 pieces of drug paraphernalia, 10 baggies of methamphetamine, and five baggies of marijuana concealed in an unmarked and unsecured evidence bag in the trunk. Also, a massive note here is that it was reported that prosecutors reviewed nearly 300 cases that involved Wester. Of those, they had to drop the charges in nearly 100 20 cases, this including Odom. Now, Eddins has said that there wasn't evidence that Wester planted drugs or fabricated arrests in all of the cases. Also noting that the charges are based on his arrest of 11 known victims named in the affidavit, though there might be more, saying, quote, our investigation is ongoing. There's a substantial amount of work to be done, but I have no belief that there's anywhere near 100 victims. But then adding, we may have identified most of the victims. We may have not. Now, with all that said, even though it seems like some of Wester's victims are getting justice, there are still so many lives that have been ruined and disrupted by his actions. Right, you had Chris Williams, the assistant special agent in charge of the case saying in a statement, there is no question that Wester's crimes were deliberate and that his actions put innocent people in jail. Right, and even though so many of these cases have been dismissed for a lot of people, it is too little too late. In 2017, a man named Benjamin Bowling lost custody of his daughter after he was convicted on felony charges for possessing meth that Wester said that he found in his car. At that time, Bowling had been released from prison a few months earlier and was being drug tested. Bowling also reportedly requested that the sheriff's office turn over the body cam footage, test the drugs for DNA and fingerprints, but reportedly they never did. Also that same year, there was a man named Jeffrey Helms and his girlfriend April Middleton who were pulled over and arrested for possessing meth. Middleton reportedly was in jail a few weeks before being released, but Helms, who had prior charges, was sentenced to 18 months in prison. And that's also not even where the damage Wester did to the Helms family stops. Jeffrey Helms' sister-in-law, Erica Helms, said that her own brother was actually arrested by Wester for possessing meth, and although his charges were dropped after Wester's arrest, it wasn't until after he already was forced to spend a year in a residential rehab. And that's why you had Erica Helms speaking about Wester saying, he's ruined lives. People are losing their lives, their freedom, their children, their marriages, all because of this one man. It's not just innocent men, it's innocent children. It goes a lot deeper than everyone realizes. But ultimately, you know, that's where we are. We have cases dismissed, a number of people who have been released from correctional facilities, and I can't even imagine just the, the stress and damage that this one person inflicted upon so many. And I think also what's concerning is how long it took. And like, why did it take so long for people to be like, is it weird that Zach's body cam seems to be off most of the time until he finds the drugs? Nah, you're right. He's probably just a forgetful fella. You know, it just feels like another example of the, the truly horrifying ramifications of someone that is not fit 
for power getting it. And on that completely unpleasant note, that's where we're actually gonna end today's show. And hey, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new here and we did our job well and you wanna see more of my stupid face in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to turn on notifications. Also, if you're not 100% filled in, if you want an extra bonus news video today, you can click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you wanna watch yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, maybe you missed it, you can click or tap right there. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco, you've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you. Mm -hmm. There might be a live stream tomorrow. Make sure you have notifications turned on.